kind of just sucked some of the motivation out of me. Hey guys, so let's continue on with the wintry theme. And to be honest, my puzzle collection doesn't really have many wintry, Christmassy themed puzzle sets. So of the very few that I have, I figured the next best one to do was one that I actually picked up from the from the thrift store. And it also just so happens to be from a brand that I have not tried before. And the brand that I am talking about is Bits and Pieces. This one is called Christmas Gathering. The artist is Joseph Holiduke. It is 1,000 pieces and it's 20 by 27 inches when it's completed. Now this is a fantastic image here. We obviously got ourselves a Christmas party. And with lots of parties, you know there's gonna be a lot of good food and presents, I guess. I care more about the food, really. And here we are arriving to the Christmas party. Looks like we're the last ones here, but that's okay. I'm sure the food is still hot. This party's banging. Everyone looks like they're having a great time. I love all the colors. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be a hard image to put together. Seems pretty straightforward. But then again, we're dealing with a lot of snow here, so I'm hoping that I don't get stuck on those areas. But aside from that, you know, the house looks pretty easy and everything else looks all right. I do have to say though, my main concern with putting this particular puzzle together is, well, like I said, I picked it up at the thrift store. Now, it was taped when I bought it. So my hope is that all the pieces are actually in here. If not, I, I'd be kind of devastated and it'd be the first time that I've come across a puzzle without, you know, all the pieces in it. But you know, what, what could I do, right? It didn't only cost me I think 50 cents in the end, so no big financial loss. But anyways, in regards to the brand itself, as I said, I've never tried it before, so I'm really interested to see what the overall quality and experience is like. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that all the pieces are in here so it doesn't, you know, shatter my heart, you know, in the end. But anyways, guys, I'm really looking forward to putting this image together. So you know what? Let's get this opened. All right, let's get this one opened up. Now, the previous owner did tape it on two sides, so let's hope that that is a good sign that there aren't any missing pieces here. All right, let's open this up. All right, so all the pieces are loose in here, just about all of them. Let's, let's take those apart. Obviously, this person worked on the puzzle before, so I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling a little hopeful right now. But anyways, let's see. Should I take this out of the box? Yeah, why not? And most of them fell on the floor. Probably I'm gonna be the one who ends up losing pieces. Oh, nice. All right, so let's see what we got here. Now, unfortunately, I'm not working in the natural light. It's kind of late right now, so the sun is gone. But I'm gonna do my best here to make out what this print looks like. All right, so the first thing I notice here is the glossy coating on these. So hopefully this isn't gonna give me too much of an issue when I put this together. But in regards to the print, the colors seem pretty good. Now I'm trying to figure out how to describe this because to be honest, the print itself doesn't seem very clear. It almost kind of blended, a little blurry to me with the colors, if, if that makes any sense. But I don't know if really that has more to do with the nature of this image or the nature of the artwork, you would say. I don't know, I kind of feel like the image on the box looks very crisp, very sharp, and the puzzle pieces themselves don't seem that way. But then again, I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna get a much better idea as I start piecing this image together. We do have a very nice piece size, and so far I'm also seeing quite a nice variety of piece shapes here. Got a nice random cut going on. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Now in regards to the strength, let's see what we have. It seems pretty strong. The piece thickness seems pretty good. The tabs do not seem weak, really, as long as you don't put, you know, beastly force on it. But even this little area here, it's very thin, but it's pretty solid, which is quite nice. Very nice. I'm, I'm quite surprised actually with the, you know, the quality of the piece itself. The print, I'm still not sure yet. To be honest, the overall feel of these pieces kind of reminds me of Seiko. So with that in mind, I'm curious to see how these are going to fit. And also, how are these going to hold together? 
But like I always say, we're never gonna find out until I start actually putting this puzzle together. So you know what, guys? Let's get started. All right, so I didn't drive myself too crazy sorting this puzzle. So I got through it fairly quickly. So for the first tray, of course, I have the edge pieces. Second tray is anything that has like these dark blue pieces. So it's gonna be mainly from this, the sky. And there's some white here as well, but you can see that blue in there. Next tray is mainly snow pieces. But as you can see here, we have like some of the trees, some of these have detail in them. I don't know, I feel like that should be in another tray. I'll put that there for the minute. But you know, th there's a lot going on in this one. And quite honestly, I'm pretty sure this is gonna need resorting when I get to it. But anyways, next tray is gonna be anything I believe to do with the house. So it's mainly red and yellow from the windows. Next tray here is anything that had green. So it's gonna be probably parts of her dress and anything to do with like the shutters. I also have pieces from this lamp post here, kind of like the, the leafy bit. So yeah, for some reason I felt like green just had to be separated on its own. Next tray, this was kind of random and there's not much going on here, but these pieces look to be from the sleigh. And we have some other random bits here that I just couldn't figure out where to put. This tray has pieces that had any details for, I think the guy here, the dogs, this boy, um, some from her as well and the horse and probably some other random stuff here as well. This is a bit of a mess to be honest, but, and anyways, the last one here is snow pieces, but some of these do have very small, features in there like some detail in there but it's mainly plain probably this will be the very last tray that i work on so yeah that's what we got going on here i'm not really sure what to start with but i i guess i'm just gonna see what pops out to me the most hopefully i don't have to do way too much resorting i mean I'll probably have to anyways but you know what let's let's move on so before I really got to work on this set, I hopped on over to the Bits and Pieces website to see what that was all about. So they started out in 1983 as a mail order catalog and still offer their catalog along with the online shop, which from what I can understand seems to be the only way you can purchase any of their puzzles. I don't know how true that is, but I love catalogs. I'm gonna sign up for it. I love getting that kind of stuff in the mail. But anyways, not only do they carry a large range of jigsaw puzzles, but they also carry a selection of puzzle tables and accessories, along with a bunch of other random products that don't really have anything to do with puzzles. But looking back to the puzzle side of things, my goodness, the range of piece counts is fantastic and the image selection is amazing. I mean, the real estate listings were unreal. Oh my god, this is perfect. Look, it's my two favorite things put together, a Victorian and a lighthouse. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be looking at puzzle sets, not potential vacation homes. Anyways, the overall price range is pretty good. It looks like 500 to 1000 count sets average from about 15 to 18 dollars, which is not bad really. And they even have a sales page, which is fantastic if you're looking to stock up on the cheap. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee and are available 24-7 to take care of any issues you might have with your purchase. And there's a ton more info and items to look through here, so I'll make sure to leave a link to their website down below if you want to check it out. So, back to the puzzle. After starting out with the super easy details, at times, I felt like I kept getting stuck in areas that I thought would be easy. All right, I feel like I'm not as far as I should be with this. I've been doing this for hours and for some reason, I, I don't know why it was a struggle to start. But anyways, we got most of the main details done here, like the house and we have the people here, the sled, I'm working on the horse now. And I don't know why, but I have this growing suspicion that this piece here is missing. Now I still have to check my floor again because I know when I did the unboxing, a lot of them fell on the floor, but I mean, they wouldn't have gone far. I mean, I'm sitting where most of the pieces fell, fell, but I don't know. I just, I can't seem to find this particular one. So I don't know, this might be my first puzzle where I'm missing pieces. 
but yeah i kind of feel like i should be a lot farther along considering how long i've spent on it so far but anyways here's what i have left i have all what i think are the edge pieces um, that's not even the tray that i'm showing you these are all the blue ones we still have all those white ones to go through trees here are the edges but yeah i don't know i feel like i'm actually going to be missing stuff here so you know what let's just let's just move on and hope for the best Another reason why I think I felt hindered with my progress was the fact that the only time I really had to work on this puzzle was mostly late at night, which meant I had no natural light. And I tend to work best in that setting. So I think that probably would have helped me figure out where some of these annoying pieces went. But by this point, I kind of felt myself losing motivation. And it wasn't because of the image. This image is beautiful, but it was that nagging feeling that I wasn't really going to completely finish this puzzle because of the possibility of that darn piece missing. I was feeling discouraged, but you know, I kept pushing on, of course, and try to work my way through more challenging areas. All right. It's the next day. It's nighttime. I came from work earlier. I'm having a snack now. But as soon as I was done with dinner, I decided to start attacking this. And I'm still pretty darn sure that this darn piece here is missing. I can't find it anywhere. I almost feel like there's others missing, but I don't know. I don't want to jump the gun yet. It's bad enough that there's possibly one missing, so I'm just going to try to not think about that too much but anyways for some reason i still seem to be struggling with this one and i don't really know why i don't know if it's just you know the the print on the detail you know on each piece is it's not exactly clear but then again i don't really think that's the fault of the you know in terms of quality or anything i think it just has more to do with you know the nature of the image but it looks so much more sharper here i i don't know i keep going back and forth with my thoughts on this experience but anyways i started moving on to edge pieces because i figured you know that might be something i can get done quickly and i i have a little bit but in terms of like filling in the gaps i mean this is the hard part now this is just like the snow in the image and then up here we have to finish the snow on the roof and then do just the the blue sky here which i don't think is going to be insanely difficult but then again i said that before and i've been struggling with this puzzle but anyways um let me stop complaining let me finish my snack here and let's just continue on with this so after my delicious snack, I finally got to resorting the tray with the blue pieces and even started piecing sections together in the tray. Now the great thing that I quickly took notice to while putting this together even early on was the hold. For the most part, I was able to pick up and move small sections about without them falling apart. So that was very helpful and made me feel a bit better about the whole experience. Just don't try this with much bigger sections, it won't work out too good. But that's okay, a little hold is better than none at all. Alright, so it's another day. I just got back from work and as you can see with the light shining on my face, it's still early outside. So. I have to be out of this house again in like another hour and a half. So I want to try to squeeze in 30, 40 minutes before I have to go again um, to try to get more of this puzzle done. Now, what I did to get a little bit of a head start last night, and I didn't film this, I did decide to take all the white pieces that I had, the, the snow pieces, and resort them by shape. I kind of feel like I should have done this way early on during the completion process. I kind of feel like I got lazy midway and I didn't, you know, do any resorting like I said I probably should have done in the beginning. But you know what? It is what it is. Let's just push through the last bit here and see, you know, how many other pieces I have missing because I know for sure I got one. And really the whole point of sorting it by shape when you're dealing with areas like these is to just kind of help you pinpoint exactly what you need in certain areas, especially if you have ones that are, you know, basically staring right at you. So I already know which pile I'm going to look at for this one and that one. And then from there, you know, you kind of just work your way as best you can through these gaps, but at least you get an idea of what kind of piece you need. 
So yeah, I definitely recommend you try this if you're stuck with pieces that pretty much all look the same. It really did help me push through piecing the final challenging areas in this image. An image that felt more challenging than it should have. This puzzle took me about 8 hours and 45 minutes to complete. Or not complete. What a bummer. I just knew it. But anyways, what are my final thoughts to this bits and pieces experience? All right, I'm not gonna lie, that was a bit of a bummer. And I did go into it expecting that I was gonna be missing pieces, but anyways, let's, let's move on with the review. So aside from the missing pieces, which isn't the puzzle's fault, the overall quality, I have to say, is actually not bad. The fit was great. It went in very nicely. It was not crumbly, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. This brand does have a pretty good hold to it. And I'm not saying you could pick up big sections off your table and, you know, move it to the other side. You can pick up small sections. It's really dependent on the pieces in that section. It's not everything is going to hold. But for the most part, I had pretty darn good luck with it. I did have some glare issues at times and again, and, you know, it's really dependent on what kind of lighting you're using and where it's positioned. It wasn't so much of an issue on the rare occasion when I was working on it with the natural light outside because, you know, that that spreads off nicely across the whole room and on the puzzle itself. But, you know, when you have that ball of light above you, it's just hard to kind of get yourself in a position where you're not seeing it on the image, which, you know, is like another pet peeve of mine. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, in regards to the print quality on this, the colors are great. They're very bold. They're very true to the image on the box. But there were several instances where I kind of felt like the print was not very clear. And I'm not really sure if that's the way their print looks or if that just has to do with the nature of the artwork, which is probably the case. Cause you know, it's just gonna print however it looks from however the artist painted it or did what, I don't know. But you know what I mean? But again, other than that, the colors were great. And the pieces felt great. They, they weren't weak. They had a nice firmness to them. And you know, it's quite telling as well, considering that it's a used puzzle. Who knows how many times it's been passed around. And again, all the pieces were in great shape. And of course, I did the pickup test. And I must say, this held on really well. And of course, I did like my typical, you know, take it apart in sections for like storage. But that didn't hold up well in the end. And it was surprising because I think that had more to do with the piece shapes. Which I must say, for bits and pieces, there was a great variety of piece shape. But anyways, I'm not planning to save it. I'm not planning to display it because, again, it's missing pieces. But this one will be one that I will end up donating. I didn't have any spare Ziploc bags around, so I had to just put the pieces straight back into the box, but I made sure I taped it very well, and I figured, you know what, let me leave a little note in here. And I made sure as well to leave a note on the front of the box saying that it was missing two pieces, just so that the next person is aware. Now, are these puzzles worth the price that I mentioned to you earlier? Would I pay the price? Um, if it's a great image, I think I would. Knowing me, I'd probably wait till like there's a sale or something like that so that I could pick it up for cheaper. But if I had to pay the 15, 18 dollars for like a 500 or 1000 count set, I think I'll pay it. Especially if it's a fantastic image that I just can't resist. You're still getting an overall good quality puzzle. And speaking of sales, if you put in your email through their website, they will send you a newsletter that I swear, I think I've gotten emails nearly every day of different sales going on. So it's a great way to snag these sets at a much cheaper price. And you know, it makes it even more worth it, at least to me. I would be more willing to pay that price for a bits and pieces puzzle than probably for like a Robinsberger set. Is that a very controversial statement? I'm sorry if I made you mad, but you know what, you know, Let's put that comment on hold a second. What I just said, just just try not to take that in too much. As as I said before, I do need to work on more Robinsberger sets to kind of get a better feel for their overall quality. I, I just based that statement off my first experience. But anyways, I want to know down below, what are your overall thoughts on bits and pieces? And hit that like button if you're a fan. I think for my next bits and pieces set, I do actually have another one or two use sets in my collection but i think i need to try 
a brand new set. I think I need to get a, a much better feel of the overall experience because, you know, to be honest, it was a little tainted by the fact that I was missing pieces. And I know that may sound extremely silly to some of you, but that's just me. I still absolutely love this image. And it wasn't the it wasn't the image's fault. It wasn't the quality's fault. I think it was just mainly the fact that knowing that I didn't have all the pieces very early on kind of just sucked some of the motivation out of me because I knew that in the end it, it wasn't going to be fully complete and of all pieces it had to be one of the one of the pieces had to be the one with the pie on it you can't have a good dinner without some nice dessert but anyways guys if you'd like a place to share your own puzzling experiences I do have a puzzling community that you can join and I'll leave the link down below to that video so that you can check it out and if you're new here and if you want to see me work on some other puzzles from different brands that I haven't tried before, be sure to subscribe so that you can join me on my puzzling journey. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you are all doing well. Hope you got some good plans for the new year and I will see you in the next one.